a fangless vampire transforms a freshman into a bloodsucker, resulting in unexpected consequences. College sophomore Tom Slansky, a photography major, creates a video in which he shares a story about his great history professor, Dr. Wayne Gretzky, or Dr. G, who turns out to be a vampire. According to the student, Wayne fell in love with a human named Mary Lipinski in Romania in 1711. However, they lost track of time during a romantic moment, and the sun suddenly set. As a result, the man transformed into a vampire. Unable to control himself, he bit his girlfriend's neck and drank her blood, resulting in her demise. Consequently, the woman's family was disappointed with Wayne to the extent that they did not allow the bloodsucker to attend the woman's funeral. Nevertheless, disguised as a friar, the vampire managed to sneak in and steal Mary's necklace as a souvenir. However, the woman's brother, Gregor, caught the intruder and attempted to end him by driving a wooden stake into his heart. With his super strength, the vampire blocked the attack and took his enemy's life by redirecting the sharp weapon to his stomach. Unfortunately, after Mary's passing, Wayne's fangs stopped growing. As a result, he couldn't feed on humans and had to survive by consuming animal blood for the past 300 years. In the modern day, when he was already a history professor, the vampire confided in his therapist and colleague Dr. Arthur Levine who labeled his condition as a vampire impotence. On campus, Tom converses with buddy Fred Green, who was a childhood friend enrolling that semester. Suddenly, their sorority brothers, Jared and Kyle, intrude on their conversation and playfully tease the student, assuming that the incoming freshman is his girlfriend. Nearby, Chris Keller arrived at the university. She and her father, Ted, were about to go to Dr. Levine's office when her mom requested to stay in the car because she forgot her hat. Hearing this, the daughter expressed frustration and cursed at her mother for making excuses. As the advisor conversed with a freshman and her parent, Dr. Gretzky entered unexpectedly, leading Dr. Levine to quip, speaking of the vampire. Realizing that he casually exposed the instructor's true nature, the psychology expert quickly explained that he had mentioned vampires because he was reading Twilight. He then noted his colleague was a great history teacher. Upon leaving the advisor's office, Chris encountered her friend Fred, whom she embraced. Shortly after, the student introduced the freshman and her father to his fraternity brothers. During their conversation, Jared learned that Chris pledged with Kappa Omicron, a sorority. Suddenly, they all noticed Dr. Gretzky exiting a nearby building. When the woman inquired why the professor used an umbrella, Tom explained that the instructor had a skin condition. Suddenly, Fred jumped in, recommending the new student to take Dr. Gretzky's class because he was an excellent instructor. Upon hearing this, Chris promised to add the course. Then, she shared her earlier encounter with the professor that morning when the advisor playfully referred to him as as a vampire. During class, a student asked if Dr. Gretzky was named after Wayne Gretzky, a professional hockey player who was already 50 years old. However, the educator casually disclosed that he had his name long before the individual they were referring to. Meanwhile, Ted spoke with his wife, expressing that she had upset their daughter that morning. In response, the woman asserted that she wouldn't change her Amish values because it was Chris's first day in college. Hearing this, Ted advised his spouse to build a good relationship with their child so she wouldn't lose her. During a lecture, Dr. Gretzky discreetly refilled his cup with animal blood from his tumbler, which went unnoticed by his students. Later, Dr. Levine complimented his student Samantha's essay on impotence among murderous men. Suddenly, the history teacher walked into the room, interrupting their conversation. After the student left, he confronted the advisor for unintentionally exposing him as a vampire, leading him to apologize and assure his colleague that no one would take it seriously. Later, as the sun set, Chris greeted Fred when she ran into him. Suddenly, she noticed Dr. Gretzky entering another building. The history teacher paused and turned his head in her direction. Upon seeing the beautiful freshman, he suddenly remembered Mary and lost his balance. After a brief moment, he stood up and hurried inside the building. Following this strange encounter, Dr. Gretzky confided in Dr. Levine, revealing that he experienced a similar feeling when he saw Mary 300 years ago. He mentioned that the freshman bore a striking resemblance to his former girlfriend. During night class, Fred questioned his professor fall earlier, prompting the instructor to lie that he was just avoiding a swarm of bees. Suddenly, Chris entered the room and requested to enroll in his class. Sensing that his vampire nature was slowly becoming evident, the instructor abruptly informed the class that his mother had passed away. He promptly dismissed
the class and hastily left the room. Upon entering the bathroom stall, Dr. Gretzky's fangs appeared for the first time in 300 years, causing him to laugh maniacally. When a student named Barry entered the comfort room, the hungry vampire fed on his blood. Soon after, the bloodsucker carried the lifeless body to the cemetery. The next day, Tom greeted the history teacher as a vampire due to what Chris had mentioned to them the previous day. Fred then inquired about the professor's mother's passing, leading the instructor to fabricate a response, stating he was prepared for it. Following this, he excused himself to prepare for his class. In his office, Dr. Gretzky was singing a song about accidentally ending Barry when there was a knock at his door. The door opened by itself, revealing no one there, but Chris surprised him a few seconds later. He then commented on her beauty, but the freshman barely heard it and asked him to repeat it. Suddenly, the student returned his tumbler, which she had found when he left it behind after storming out of class the previous day. She also mentioned that she had cleaned it. Upon seeing Chris, the vampire recalled Mary again, which caused him to break his guitar. Suddenly, his fangs came out, prompting him to turn around and ask the student to return the next day. That night, Fred and Tom hung out with their fraternity brothers while Chris played cards with her sorority sisters. Suddenly, the doorbell rang prompting the freshman to answer it. Upon opening the door, Chris saw her mom who had energy drinks for them. Feeling embarrassed, the student talked to her mom outside, confronting her for visiting her past midnight. The older woman mentioned that she couldn't sleep, which led the student to insult her mother's Amish values. Afterward, the upset freshman accepted the drinks, and her mom left the area. In the Keller's residence, Ted asked his wife about her surprise visit to their daughter. However, the woman explained that it didn't go well and expressed her desire to turn back time, implying she regrets giving birth to their daughter. Hearing this, the offended man knocked her red drink away. Chris went to Dr. Gretzky's office the next day and handed him a slip to add his class. The professor signed it but put her in the morning class, replacing Barry. She suddenly hugged him when he returned the paper, and he reciprocated the gesture. Outside the campus, Tom took photos for his class. Suddenly, Chris arrived, prompting the photographer to remind his friend to ask the freshman out for the party. However, Fred chickened out. Later, while Dr. Gretzky Gretzky was discussing his lesson, the freshman gazed at the instructor in her seat, gradually realizing she was attracted to him. After class, the teacher sang in his office about how Chris looked like a poor man's version of Mary. Suddenly, the freshman entered the room and told him how the discussion had spoken to her. Seconds later, she removes her clothing, leading to a romantic encounter between them. Tom then interrupts his story, noting that some people consider Chris and Dr. Gretzky's relationship disgusting because of the age difference. However, he points out that people would be puking had they only known the real age gap. The sophomore praised the bloodsucker for being involved with the freshman and her mom. However, he frowned upon recalling the impact of everything on Fred. While playing a drinking game, Jared asked Fred about Chris spending romantic time with Dr. Gretzky. In response, the student dismissed the rumor, considering it stupid. Tom backed him up, explaining that just because the freshman was always inside the instructor's office didn't mean they were doing something inappropriate. However, the student felt offended and walked out when Kyle insisted that his childhood friend was promiscuous. Meanwhile, the sorority members confronted Chris about Dr. Gretzky, but she brushed them off, stating that it was not their business. When Samantha asked why she was always in the instructor's office, the freshman claimed she was discussing history lessons with the teacher. One day while capturing photos, Tom spotted the history professor and Chris walking together to the instructor's car. Upon seeing this, Fred felt heartbroken as he had always had a crush on his friend, leading the photographer to comfort him. Later, Dr. Gretzky confessed to Dr. Levine that he had been spending romantic time with his student. Upon learning this, the therapist asked his client if he had ever had feelings for someone besides Mary, but he mentioned no one. Then, Dr. Levine asked him why he wanted to feel like a vampire again in the first place, prompting the instructor to reveal that he thought it would make him better. He explained that when he was with Chris, he felt fleeting moments like Mary was still alive. Fred spoke to Chris the following day, confronting her about her secret relationship with Dr. Gretzky. The freshman confirmed this but admitted she was thinking about her childhood friend when she was with the instructor. Upon hearing this, the student leaned in and attempted to kiss her. However, Chris clarified that she was thinking about him non-romantically. When she began worrying about her college choices, Fred advised her to break up with the professor and then walked away. Later that evening, Tom reviewed his photos and noticed that Dr. Gretzky was invisible in the picture. He quickly informed 
informed Fred, who only accused the photographer of manipulating the image. However, the sophomore asserted that the instructor was also consistently unseen in other photos. To investigate further, the student brought his camera to class the following day and secretly captured a picture of Dr. Gretzky while he was beside Chris. After spending a romantic time with her professor, the freshman suggested they should hang out during the night like ordinary people. However, the instructor declined, explaining that he was not a regular guy. Upon hearing this, the freshman felt upset, claiming he was just like her mom. She then tried to provoke him, asserting that she was thinking of other people while they were together. In response, the instructor claimed he did the same thing, angering the student. Suddenly, Dr. Gretzky whispered as if he were talking to Mary and telling her she was probably rolling over in her grave. However, Chris heard this and reacted by revealing that her mom, who also goes by Mary, is still alive. Upon learning this, the professor was surprised and asked for her mother's maiden name to confirm. When she answered Lipinski, the man suddenly transformed into a vampire and bit Chris's neck, drinking a pint of her blood. When he returned to his senses, the bloodsucker panicked at what he had done and took the unconscious student to his house. He then left a note beside her, advising her to stay and that blood was in the fridge. Dr. Gretzky then headed to Keller's residence to see Mary. Ted opened the door for him, but when he inquired about the woman, the husband informed him that she had gone to see a movie. Before he left, the history teacher asked for Mary's picture. However, the man only revealed that his wife didn't like to be photographed. Hearing this, the instructor handed a box to Ted, claiming that it belonged to his spouse. As the teacher returned to his car, he jumped for joy, realizing that his ex-girlfriend was still alive. After this encounter, Dr. Gretzky shared everything with Dr. Levine, who speculated that Mary might have been in a coma while in her grave. When the advisor realized Mary was transformed into a vampire, the therapist asked if her daughter was one. However, the history teacher explained that it didn't work that way. Intrigued, Dr. Levine asked about the specific process of vampire transformation. The instructor then clarified that it occurs when fang creatures consume a pint of their target's blood, even without direct contact. Upon returning home, the history teacher panicked when he discovered that Chris was gone, prompting him to search for her immediately. In desperation, he headed to the fraternity house, but Tom and Fred didn't know where their friend was. That evening, Mary received a note from her husband informing her that a man had dropped off a small box for her. Upon opening it, she accidentally shattered her wine glass upon discovering her old necklace. Continuing his search, Dr. Gretzky drove into the woods and encountered several cars with lifeless bodies. As he investigated the area, he spotted Chris who had consumed the blood of 29 people. The instructor then attempted to talk to her and offer guidance on coexisting with humans. When he asked if she had read his note, the freshman mentioned that she didn't like the taste of animal blood. Shortly after, she used her newfound strength to strike him and left. Dr. Gretzky returned to Mary's house the following day, and when the woman saw him, they reunited and kissed. When Ted saw them, he quickly declared that he wanted a divorce. Afterward, the vampires caught up and talked about the people they had terminated. Following this, the history teacher confessed that he had met her daughter. He explained that the freshman had caused his teeth to grow back and confessed to spending romantic moments with her several times. Upon learning this, Mary was shocked and ordered her ex-boyfriend to leave her house. Meanwhile, Tom, still attempting to convince Fred about Dr. Gretzky's vampiric nature, brought his friend to Ludmila, a psychic who showed them a sketchbook containing drawings of people she slept with. When Fred saw an illustration resembling their history teacher, the woman revealed she had met him in 1986. However, she clarified that they didn't make love because the man couldn't move on with his past love. When they asked if she knew his name, the psychic disclosed that she only knew him as the Great One. Upon hearing this, Tom knew he was right about his professor's secret. Meanwhile, Chris went to the sorority house and bit Samantha and the other girls, turning them into vampires. While in the bathtub that evening, the history teacher confided in his therapist about what had occurred earlier that day and his contemplation of ending Chris's life due to her dangerous acts. The next day, Tom and Fred used a mirror to reflect the sunlight into their professor's office that morning to expose the man's true nature. As Dr. Gretzky read the news of 29 lost lives, the students arrived and tricked him into looking at an envelope containing photos of him and Chris. When he got out of his seat, Fred opened the window blinds, allowing sunlight to enter the room. In response, the uncomfortable professor quickly rose, struck the student, and closed the window. Afterward, Dr. Gretzky strangled his student while Tom attempted to strike him with an improvised stake. However,
her. The teacher evaded the attack and kicked the sophomore off. Soon, the teacher proposed that they all calm down to talk. He then revealed that he had turned Chris into a vampire and asked for the student's help to end her life because she had gotten out of control. Upon hearing the plan, Tom agreed to help the teacher, while Fred initially hesitated. Afterward, the instructor taught the students how to end a vampire's life effectively. He demonstrated that they needed to pierce a wooden stake through the bloodsucker's heart. That evening, Tom and Fred went to the sorority house, where they overheard the leader planning to do a blood drive at the fraternity house. Suddenly, Chris disrupted the meeting by biting the speaker's neck, causing the others to panic. Witnessing this, the students rushed to Dr. Gretzky and informed him about what was happening. Upon hearing the news, the frustrated teacher called Mary, who declined to assist them. Meanwhile, Tom walked to school and encountered Chris and her sorority sisters with umbrellas, distributing flyers for a blood drive. The freshmen invited the photographer to join but didn't want Fred to come. Afterward, the sophomore went to Dr. Gretzky's office and informed him of the freshmen's plan, prompting them to devise a strategy. Meanwhile, Dr. Levine summoned Samantha into his office and handed her a blood bag for the drive since he couldn't attend the event. Before the blood drive, Tom planted wooden stakes in his dorm and even filled their door with them as protection against the bloodsuckers. Suddenly, Chris arrived with her sorority sisters to set up the fraternity house, but the sophomore and Fred excused themselves. While filming himself, Tom says his final goodbye to his loved ones just in case he can't make it. Then, he zooms in on his face and tells the sorority sisters to prepare for their upcoming attack. Afterward, the duo goes to a store and steals many fluorescent lights to set up a trap in the basement. After preparing more wooden stakes, Dr. Gretzky calls Mary, begging her to help terminate Chris. When the woman stays firm about her decision, the teacher provides her an address if she changes her mind. While the sorority sisters are inside the fraternity house, Tom, Fred, and Dr. Gretzky sneak into the back and set up a stake trap for the vampires. Shortly after, the students lock some of their brothers in the living room, declaring that the women are bloodsuckers. Afterward, the duo tries to rescue their friends in the bedroom with the vampires. Following their failed attempt to save Kyle, Tom informs Dr. Gretzky to lure their enemies into the snake trap, which is a success. While the vampire slayers are busy inside the fraternity house, Chris ends the nurse's life in the trailer and gets a box containing the blood bags. Shortly after, the freshman spots her mother's car as she leaves the area. To get inside the fraternity house, Mary pretends to be her daughter. When the sorority sisters let her in, she helps the students and Mr. Gretzky eliminate the female vampires. Afterward, they all go out to find Chris. Upon checking the blood drive trailer, they realize what Chris had done. Upon arriving at the sorority house, Mary tries to talk to her daughter, who reveals her plan to turn everyone into vampires by drinking their blood. Hearing this, the mother reacts negatively. However, the bloodsucker explains that she loves what she's doing. Suddenly, Tom, Fred, and Dr. Gretzky appear to execute their plan and attack the freshmen. However, Chris pushes the teacher aside, leading him to knock the photographer unconscious unintentionally. As the instructor tries to awaken the sophomore, the vampire starts biting Fred, prompting the alert teacher to restrain her. After Dr. Gretzky signals Mary to end her daughter's life with a stake. However, when the woman positions the wooden weapon but is afraid to do it, Fred uses his mallet to push it through the vampire's heart. The student then apologizes to his childhood friend for what he did. As Chris gasps for her final breath, she hands him a flash drive, revealing that she made him a mix for his iPod. Suddenly, Tom awakens, but his emotional friend storms out of the house, excited to listen to Chris's gift for him. As Mary mourns her daughter's passing, Dr. Gretzky and Tom head to the kitchen area. While the photographer checks the fridge, the history teacher discovers that Dr. Levine is among the people the freshman has turned into a vampire. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.